next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911. Plus, an infant falls into a bucket of bleach. Oh my God, Luna! Luna, she's here! Learn how to prevent a common household accident from becoming a death trap on Rescue 911. Inside the high-risk maternity ward at Palm Springs Desert Regional Hospital, five women and their babies face an uphill battle. Don't miss Babies Special Delivery, tonight on Discovery Health Channel. On November 21st, 1990, in Lebanon, Oregon, Edie Carrico was helping her sister Linda Eli prepare for their big family Thanksgiving dinner the next day. I hadn't really talked to Katie in a week, so we were kind of catching up on, you know, what, what had been going on in our lives, you know, and just being sisters. We were talking about the kids and how big Jessica and Sierra were getting. They're about 11 months old and three weeks apart, and we were talking about how we were going to get together and have just one birthday party for both of them. Edie, I'm going to go ahead and make my mouth water. You want to put that batch in? And I knew I had to scrub my kitchen floor. So I went to get a bucket of mop water. <laughs> I walked out and closed the doors thinking that the babies might accidentally go in there and get into it or spill it. We were going to lay the girls down for a nap. That way I can mop my floor and it'd be dry before they got back up. Well, I need to make her a bottle. Okay. Sierra is an absolute monkey. She's independent. She's just stubborn. She prefers to do things on her own, by herself, for herself. I made up the bottle, grabbed a diaper, and I made a circle through the living room and back down the hallway to Linda's bedroom. Sierra! Sierra wasn't there. Jessica was. So I walked down the hall and figured that she had just crawled down to the kids' bedrooms at the end of the hallway. I was getting the cookies on a plate, and the next thing I heard was Edie screaming. She was just screaming this, a mother's scream when your child is hurt or, or you know they're gone. Oh my, oh, my God! She was extremely cold. Her lips were blue and her face was ashen. I turned her over the sink and goo came out of her mouth. I was screaming, I'm going, oh my God, Linda, Linda, she's dead, she's gone. I checked to see if there was a pulse. I felt it very faintly, but I could tell her chest was not rising and falling. I knew if I didn't do anything immediately, she would die. After each breath, I would look at her and, and it wasn't doing any good. She's not breathing yet, we're gonna have to do it again. I started to feel very helpless. 
And then I remembered, you know, this is what I, this is why I learned it. Breathe, breathe, breathe. After the sixth one, she opened her eyes and I could hear her pull in air on her own. She's breathing. I could tell she was still in danger, but praise God, she was breathing. At 3.16 p.m., rescue units with the Lebanon Fire Department were dispatched to the scene. Working on a three attempt to She's going to be okay. We're going to take her to the hospital, and she's going to be okay. She's breathing now. She's going to be okay. I kept smelling something really funny. It's like I smell something, but I can't put my finger on it. And I turned and asked Linda, is there a bleach in your bucket? Then Linda lost it. Within six minutes of the call, paramedic Tim Frost and his partner arrived at the house. The minute I went through the door, there was a strong smell of chlorine in the air. How long has she been in there? Five minutes. The smell was strong enough to burn my own eyes. We didn't want to waste any time. She was in very serious condition. Because of the added problem we had with the chemical in the water, we gave her not much of a chance to survive. Ten-month-old Sierra was taken to Lebanon Community Hospital, where she was examined by emergency physician Les Pliskin. When the child arrived in the emergency room, she responded to what we call noxious stimuli. From that point on, she became less responsive. She never did open her eyes to voice at all. Sierra was flown to Dornbecker Children's Hospital and put under the care of Dr. Alan Paschal. We knew that she was likely to have a severe lung injury, and she also had an inadequate function of her heart. Her blood pressure was very low, very difficult to measure. However, she did show some neurologic function, which as early on in her course is a very good sign. She looked so helpless and so tiny. She had every machine in that place on her. I couldn't even hold her. That, I think that was torture. It seems like something that a child couldn't do. But in my five or so years of pediatric critical care, I've seen four or five bucket drownings. Many of the cases I've seen ha have been fatal. After two weeks in the hospital, Sierra was released. In a checkup six months later, she was given a clean bill of health. I am so thankful that we have her today to share and to love. And so it's truly a miracle. Over the last 10 years, hundreds of children have died by drowning in buckets. The best is that I have the joy of her today and that I can speak out and make more parents aware of their surroundings. Children move fast. Don't underestimate them. If you think a child can go out and fall in a swimming pool and drown, so you put a fence around your swimming pool, but the thought of six inches of water taking a baby's life, you just don't think about it. Children have larger head sizes in proportion to the rest of their body. So one could picture the one-year-old simply looking into the bucket and they end up head down in the bucket uh, and unable to get themselves out. I feel any parent, mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, should get CPR. I never thought it would happen to me. But at that time, I had the knowledge and I used it, and she's alive today because of it. We all should take first aid and CPR courses every year. By learning basic life-saving techniques, we might be able to save the life of someone we love. This series is dedicated to all the men and women who answer our calls for help and are there when we need them most. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.